done better blue side throughout the split here, and you're seeing Liquid getting rid of some of the carry picks Licorice might want to play with that Gangplank ban. Meanwhile, Cloud9 trying to ban tanks, because Licorice has been best served playing fighter versus fighter matchup so far in the top lane as opposed to tank one. Yeah, not a big surprise here. Both teams focusing on that top lane. You did hear Licorice in that uh, little video from the very beginning of the split. Impact is the one he wants to prove himself against kind of the replacement here. And I mean, he was able to best him the first time they met. It was in that Vladimir versus Gangplank matchup. And a lot of the success that Licorice had in the earlier half of the season was either playing as Gangplank into tanks or counterpicking Gangplank as these fighters, as you said, bringing out things like the Kled, the Vladimir, and even the Camille into these matchups. And he's so good at that fighter versus fighter kind of high octane style. And that is why they're targeting all these tanks so heavily. They're trying to make impact play on a less safe pick and this tells me immediately that C9 still wants to play through top. In order to do that, though, they've had to let Swain through. This champion, especially on 8.5, a mm -hmm. lot of talk about how the buffs have really made him that power pick. And he actually can play midline. He's semi-tanky, uh, you know, with the ultimate getting so much life back. So uh, a little bit of both there as far as the DPS and tankiness go. Yeah, you know, it's very, very interesting because, I mean, this is actually the most banned champion on 8.5 globally. So yep. uh, definitely a power pick. but. It could, it could be flex, right? Like, as you said, it yeah, could actually say, be going top. Yeah. We've seen it, it played by Hunu, we've seen it played by a couple of other teams. We'll see if that is going to be impact style here. Cloud9's choice, though. I'm going to grab the jungle, Sejuani, and look for the second one. Yeah, Swain is really good, you know, into these mid-range matchups. So uh, Cloud9 actually are going to be the ones that uh, get to pick into it. And I've seen a lot of people actually most recently talking about how it is a little bit risky to uh, blind pick him, so maybe we'll have some extra range or some sort of strategy here from C9. So far, though, it looks to be very standard picks for them. You know, Spence Garen on the Sejuani, he's put a lot of time on that matchup. You know, obviously, the Skarner is also just up, uh, and that one also being one of the premier picks. Another thing worth mentioning about Swain, especially looking at it from the mid lane point of view, is it does have pretty poor wave clear. Uh, the wave clear, especially in the earlier stages, you can really struggle to push them out, especially against you know, something such as the Orianna. So that is one of the ways that you can sometimes kind of mitigate the power that this champion brings is simply avoiding conflict, pushing them in, trying to move to the other side of the map, trying to play with your jungler and, and threaten attacks elsewhere away from that swing. Eight seconds to go until Liquid finish their first round, and it is looking like that flex okay. Swain as the Rise does get locked in. And now they get two of the most premier champions in the game with both Swain and Rise. This does mean, though, that this is going to be a, a Swain top, which gives Licker a, a chance to actually counterpick this. And Kled, which is one of his, his, his powerful champions, is actually a really good matchup into Swain. Not sure if we're going to see that Nar would be kind of a more of a generic safe pick and look mm. like that is what he goes for. I'm going to say I'm a little bit disappointed that you triple ban tanks and then you don't even really go for more of a counter pick on the Swain when you see that it is going to be going top and that's the opportunity. We'll have to keep an eye though uh, because Nar can uh, is very good at controlling ranges. So we'll see just how well uh, you know Licorice is able to keep impact at that arm's length. Not very long range on the lightning from his Q. And we'll have to see what the second round of bans do come in. You know, all these lanes have been matched up, so uh, we're just looking at bottom lane for both sides here. Cloud9 banning tank after tank after tank. This time around aimed at the bot lane as Braum is taken off the table. Of course, Cloud9 do have first dibs on picks here in this second phase. And as both teams looking for a bot lane, we'll see if they want the AD carry or the support first, but waiting for Liquid's ban now. I'm going to be pretty interested to see if Jin is going to be picked or banned away by C9. We know that Doublelift has really been liking this pick, and it's one of Sneaky's most famous picks. He certainly can play it, and it's a very strong in 8.5. Especially since uh, Team Liquid are showing pretty AP heavy right now. Yeah. Uh, Jin, who uh, you know would build some lethality, uh, want to be that AD threat, might be definitely a target. Jin are going to be off the board as well, though for that extra protection for Sneaky. Not gonna let it through. And five seconds to go for Cloud9's last ban of this first game of the series. What are they most afraid of? Actually, Morgana taken off the table, seen as a counter pick to Thresh, and interesting enough, normally Braum as well, so curious if that does mean more playmaking out of Smoothie. Yeah, this is actually pretty interesting to, to see this going around. And we have been seeing a decent amount of Morgana plus Caitlyn and also Morgana plus Jin was something that TL ran before. So uh, maybe trying to target some of the support champions there, looking to perhaps pick away uh, the Jin. But obviously things like Tristana, which has been one of Doublelift's favorites, is still on the table. You do still have things like the Varus, the Ezreal, etc. So there's quite a few options remaining. And Smoothie, as he usually is, going to be having that Alistar band away from him. All right, so Cloud9's choice of what they want here in the second phase. Every single Marksman bot laner is available for the choosing. C9 
Except for Zaya, so those... Except for, sorry, yes. That was banned away at the very beginning by Liquid. That one's gone from the duo. So Tom Kench will be grabbed up here. They will leave Sneaky's pick for last. It's now Team Liquid's choice to put their duo lane together. As Sneaky can counter pick what he sees in the lane. And I do think Tom Kench is incredibly strong into the initial three we've seen. Works very well into Skarner. You can actually eat people out of the ultimate. You know, also the Rise W. You have the Swain pull in. So Tom Kench does offer quite a bit of safety. I was kind of expecting a double range bottom lane there for Team Liquid, though, wow. because they did clearly leave this Tom Kench up, even though they have the Skarner. And Kane also said that this game, Double Lift and Ole are going to pop off. If you're a double range <laughs> matchup, try to start that early. Uh, you know, Nami and Caitlyn definitely can win that lane. I mean, Nami and Caitlyn is one of the most abusive 2v2 lanes that there are in the whole game, in my opinion. Like, I think it's it's so, so strong, and Jin probably going to be the answer here, but yep. this should be very heavily favored toward TL's side in the early stages. One of the big kind of criticisms of range supports is how gankable they are, but if you do not get down there as Fenskare, and if you do not get down there and actually punish the Nami in the 2v2, expect Double to open up a big CS lead. Also remember, Poe Belter on the rise versus Cloud9 yet again, and his roams were crucial in uh, you know, affecting a lot of plays around that bottom lane. So they're going to have to keep their eyes open from not only counter ganks from Smithy, but also Poe Belter, uh, see if they can pin him down in the mid lane. We'll see if Cloud9 can survive the duel lane now. Of course, you expect the 2 on 2 to look so much stronger from the Liquid squad. I'm curious if they try to match the shove by going Doran's ring on Sneaky to shove a whole bunch of waves with the grenade, or if he goes Doran's shield to survive. And if those Poelter roams from the rise do pay off at the end of the day, Liquid can have a ton of pressure here. So a Swain top lane versus Nar up there. Impact versus Licorice. Going to be an exciting game to see as game one is about to be underway. Definitely is, and it, and it really feels like C9 has put so much emphasis on their top lane, you know, with the triple bans, with this matchup that they have picked up there. And likewise, for the other side, it's it's about the bottom side for TL. You got to see where the teams are going to be able to get their advantages. There we go, Liquid and Cloud9 hitting the rift here on this one. Seeds four and five. The audience bathed in blue light, just slightly different hues. And lots of team jerseys in there as well. Let's get ourselves into game one. Already worth mentioning here, too, is the fact that Doublelift is going cleanse and Olay is running heal. So this is not an exhaust Nami. This is uh, the cleanse heal lane on the bottom side. And I think that makes quite a bit of sense for Doublelift when you're looking at things like the Sejuani ultimate as the way to kind of pick you off. And they're probably not feeling very threatened in that 2v2. One thing I am surprised about, though, is it's a coin start for Olay because if you're fighting a two on two to actually battle back for position, you want Spell Feast for the damage. And if you're shoving in a turret, which you expect actually from this lane, you get more gold by going Spell Feast as well. I'm a little surprised that that was the choice here for him, but he's going to go for that one. It's going to be more mana regen as a result, typically, and that might mean a, a big enough difference in this laning phase. Now, some people can also really favor the move speed on that, and that's something that, that a lot of more people are taking into consideration now. Yeah, I mean, Skarner's definitely going to favor some move speed, so a little bit of team cohesion there. In the river, though, pretty much everybody's starting out with some uh, defensive warding. Yeah, we'll see as they go back and forth, and we fight for Skarner Spire as they spawn up. Licorice showing its dance moves. Actually just amazing on that Nar is 10 gold apiece to the trio of Liquid's top side. Smithy can hope to make sure everything else looks okay for him. We have seen Cloud9 go for some very cheeky invades against Skarna specifically. That was, of course, the last regular season match where the Olaf got off to a 4-0 start. Maybe C9 tries to do that again, but so far Liquid have actually earned 60 more gold than their opponents due to getting both neutral Spires. Means very little, but it is something. We are into the laning phase. It's pretty much undisturbed. Smithy with an interesting start doing a Wolves first, hmm. trying to dodge a potential gank and also trying to disrupt the routing as there are no deep wards that I can tell of to know where Smithy did start. This will be a bit unknown. It's going to be interesting to see how C9 is, is able to kind of track him and when they first get their information, what they're going to look to do that with. Uh, he may potentially want to go up to the top side and, and look for any sort of setup there. Because if you can catch Licorice in the mini NAR and you actually can catch him with a never move, pull him in, uh, he does become very vulnerable. So there is some pretty nice synergy for the setup with that gank. Nice little bit of poke. I love the ooze and ahs from the crowd. Keep it up, everyone. Uh huh. There was a big reaction to Impact uh, getting all three minions yeah. <laughs> with the first Q up on top side. Uh, and he is getting the first shove here onto Licorice. Uh, Licorice trying to keep his distance, as we said, doesn't want to get in range for those trades early on. See if he, how well he can see us under the turret, though. All right, pops the bone plating from Licorice, but no follow-up damage. That's going to go on cooldown for 40 seconds without any actual damage. Block. Ooh, he missed the boomerang, but he got it anyway. 
Licorice has made it look cool. But yeah, 12 to 9 in CS so far. Impact, perfect last hitting so far. A few denied away from Licorice. One camp lead for Smithy so far, which is kind of the way of Skarner. Has left his bottom jungle alive, though, and now he's going to find Sven here as they're battling for Scuttle Crab, and he gets that one as well. So, and Sven, nice. Sven should have noticed they didn't have his red buff yet, so that does give him a little bit of information on the camps, uh, perhaps that he has clear. Uh, but he can actually go back, and it looks like he's going to go to Golem, so doing just a full six camp clear likely here. Yeah, Krug's there uh, for Smithy. Um, but yeah, Skarner, Skarner has such a an advantage over Sejuani in the early clear anyway. Sven Skarner just kind of looking for wards, trying to get off his first back here, and he's going to pick up boots early on for the extra move seed. Let's see if he actually gets to use these. His own Krugs uh, will be taken first, as that's the camp that he did leave up on the top side, though. Well, here we are once again looking at the mid lane as the first teleport was used by the spellbook of Poe Belter, and he's got the tier, which is kind of what he wanted, so he's going to start stacking up no problems. We'll see when Jensen gets to match. That a nice pull in, good damage, and Licorice forced to run away. Farm, though, is equal, and that damage isn't going to mean much against the Doran Shield. Interesting to track as well, especially early on in the game. Uh, I like it when the laners will update the jungler on when your opponent left lane to ward on the side. It's pretty easy to track the low cooldown early game trinket wards. So, uh, you know, Licorice should be feeding information to Sven Skarin. Impact is just dropped over into the tri bush. So he's mm -hmm. like, all right, there you go. Uh, his second control ward has been used. You can just go around the river if you want to actually gank top. Swain is still definitely gankable. And he is a bit pushed up. And I will say, if you're going to try to gank this lane, you want to look to do that pre-6. Uh, Swain post-6 becomes very, very difficult to take down, even sometimes in these 2v1 situations. And right there on your screen, we just saw the communication with the team. Impact uh, warded up in the tri-bush. Then he tells Poe Belter, hey, the only way I can get ganked right now is if Sejuani either you know goes over the Baron Pit wall with her Q, which she's not going to do because she wants that for the actual gank, or ward the ramp as well. So Team Liquid cover both sides of that jungle. Exit from Cloud9 with wards, and that's why we're seeing this in action here. And then at this point, you really have to look at the CS in the bot lane already, and this is kind of expected. Double should be getting a pretty nice advantage, but already opening up, you know, 10 plus CS advantage on that bottom side. This is what is going to happen if this stays in an isolated 2v2. You know, TL doesn't necessarily need to gank. They need to protect that from any incoming ganks from Sunscaren and just keep that pressure up nonstop. And what you're seeing here is why I brought up Doran's Ring and Champ Select. Sneaky hasn't taken so much damage. He's still holding on to his potion. The shield doesn't seem quite maybe as mandatory, but if you got to spam, maybe they'd be under turret a bit less. But we're looking at now a potential gank in the top oh, side. Predator pop. He wants this one, and they're going to find a little bit of damage. No, he jumps over the possible stun, but still some damage coming across. Flashes back at Smithy down at about 200 HP. Can't tower dive much more, and impact low on man has to walk back out. So Licorice, pretty nicely played, gets away from the first blood gank. Very nice there, and that communicates to the bottom side that's been scaring should have priority on that half of the map as uh, <clears throat> Smithy not only uses his Predator, um, but also is going to have to run for his life after that one. Still, at the end of the day, Smithy is farming very efficiently. He forces out the Flash, so you know, nice escape there from Licorice, but definitely, I still think, a pretty positive play overall uh, for TL, and it's something where they can look once Smithy hits six to actually try to repeat this and gank a Flashless... Nar, which could be pretty easy to, to, to pull off. See if the repeat comes through as long as they play around the mini Nar tiredness as the wave is being pushed back and forth. No recalls just yet for the bottom lanes, but expected to come in soon as Sneaky is out of mana and has no more potions left. So that is going to be the Cloud9 recall first. Should give a bit of agency to the TL duo. Mid lane is pushing back and forth as well. We have yet to see Jensen's first back, but he should have enough money for a lost chapter and then some. It looks like he's going to make his backwards move as well. And you can see Double if you know, he's staying in lane, they want to push this out. Smoothie is actually hanging around to hopefully freeze this for Sneaky, who did go back for the earlier base. So he's going to try to wait a maximum amount of time, then show his face. He's trying to hold this wave, but looks like Double if will just go back to base, and Olay will be the one uh, to try to get this pushed in. Smoothie actually, this is, uh, is pretty nice from him. He's actually going to get all this extra CS or at least a, a decent portion of it, yep. over to Sneaky. And this means that the wave is going to be stuck more on their side as well. It will be a bit of a slow push, so this keeps Sneaky safer. This yeah. gets him four or five extra CS that he wouldn't have had. So nice little move there from Smoothie that does help to alleviate some of the difference in farm. 
Interestingly, yep. Sneaky is choosing to push the lane out instead of keep it freezing under his turret right there. So uh, the lane minions will be at equilibrium, making the fighting a bit easier for him, but it means he will not die, deny quite as many from double lift in the long term. And at least Cloud9, you know, for Sneaky's sake, he was able to match with the BF sword. There is going to still be the extra move uh, movement speed from double lift, who has taken cleanse here, but Licorice. No flash. Oh, no flash. He already used the leap. He's pulled right back in. He's got nowhere to go. Pulled in once again by Swain. And they're going to wait to deal the rest of the damage. First blood, gonna go to impact, no problem. Well played, the Liquid Duo. Actually oh, it's got stolen. It was, it was actually red the, red, the red buff burn, or perhaps that true damage burn from the smite. He tried to give it over, but it did. Either way, it goes TL's way, and, and nicely done on the repeat gank. Yes, they took out Tracker's Knife, so you get to take red smite now, and you know, kills. can't blame me for stealing that kill. Let's take another look here, though, at the replay. Yeah, wanted to go up and, and actually check where Smithy was, trying to get some vision, but gives it away pretty easily where he was uh, by popping that little plant. And because he has no flash, there's no way out for Ligris here. The leap was blown early, and they see trying to give it over to Impact, but Smithy is actually the one going to pick it up. And it means now, though, that Cloud9 with some pressure on the bottom side of the map. Going to go for this Ocean Drake here if they can. That might have been part of the reason they were pushing before. Bubble attempted, not going to happen. As long as the smite is good, they'll be fine. And actually, the Jin fourth shot going to do what Callista could have done and knocks that one down. A fairly early Ocean Drake does mean quite a bit for the laning phase. Jensen's going to enjoy even more mana. He, that said, he's full with the last chapter in a tier. But still, this should be still a positive thing. Having a pre-10 minute Ocean Drake means a lot for the laning phase. Definitely very nice, especially when your bottom lane is going to be on, on a little bit of the receiving end of some of the punishment that comes out from this range support. Uh, but you have to say, all things considered, uh, bottom lane is evening out quite a lot, and this advantage is not extending here yet from double if then Olay. And for the C9 duo, they're going to be feeling pretty happy about this as long as they can get out without their turret going down or big CS steps. Especially because, you know, uh, Tom Kench there with the ultimate now, level 6, it does put a bit more pressure on the rest of the map. Uh, Spend Scarin on Sejuani, the ultimate is really good at creating plays in this stage of the game. So there's a potential for Cloud9 to try and strike back. That being said, you know, Smithy's Ooh. Predator is almost back Ooh, up, even though he's yeah. right next to little Ward Buddy. Yeah, he's trying to cosplay Rangar, but he's not an unseen Predator here in this one, so he gets nothing out of it at all. Yeah, and Sven was actually behind Jensen there, waiting just in case they tried to overcommit. He could have turned that one around, and Smithy now knows the jig was up, clears out that ward, and he still has his flash, and his Predator is up again. We have to remember, he didn't have to blow his flash on either of the top lane ganks he pulled off. And he can look to go for a play here now, but it can be tough to attack a Tom Kench lane unless you want to target the support himself. If they want to kill him, we'll see what happens. He's got Flash and still Ignite from this as he's going to be stunned up. And the ulti not going to be committed too much for it. The bubble is all the damage that came through. Double if busy last hitting minions under his turret, and that's guaranteed gold instead of the risk for it. More damage onto Licorice, who's soon to be Mega Nar, but of course Health Bar. Ooh, and he just lost the, yeah, that nullifying orb, so more of his tank stats missing. Not really going the way that they had hoped on the top side of the map. Impact's actually doing a really good job, and it's it's interesting to see that he's doing it off of a tank, right? The triple ban tanks here from Cloud9. He says, "All right, I'll play a carry." He picks the Swain. He's doing very well in this top side so far. And uh, Licorice, the last two times that he's actually matched up against Impact, Impact certainly got the better of him. You know, being able to impact not only the lane but moving around the map very, very well. And this is with Cloud9 throwing three of the bands at tanks and uh, Licorice having the counter pick here into Swain, but you know having to give up this power pick and still building you know the Spirit's Cowl here. He also has the Doran Shield. Very defensive opening. Uh, Impact still has a lot of pressure on top side, and this also means Smithy going to look uh, for a ward there. Maybe does not find it. I always like talking a little, a little bit about the builds here from Swain too, because there are you know, some very different schools of thought. Should you be going for a tier? Is that too greedy early on? Because getting the Seraphs in the later stages, once you actually have that stacked up, not only is the extra amount and shield so nice during your ultimate for the actual tankiness, the CDR is very, very important for Swain. And you can see Impact is going for the less greedy build straight to the Rod of Ages. And it's not that he can't go back later and pick up that Seraphs, but uh, for now, he is going more of a conservative build, more power rate right off the bat, but he will be kind of meeker later on as a result. See, of course, we are still in 8.5 despite 8.6 being on live, but now we got a fight in the bottom side as Ole takes two hits in, but 
Not going to be stunned or chomped up, so no problems here. But now Luke Smithy ready. wants it in the mid lane for Jensen. There's the root cleanse, the flash away. That is one summoner for two, but the chase forward. Smithy going to be knocked up, but he's still got the pull coming, coming forward. In. Rest of the team coming across as well. The trade kill as Smith's going to get the kill into Luke Smithy, and somehow Jensen is not yet going to die. Still waiting oh. for his life with the shield back on. Finds another kill to impact, and the body block for Smoothie means the two for zero team fight. And now the curtain call comes in. Look at a knockdown for Walter. Gets away for that one. Still a shot on a double. One more on to Ole. The disengage comes through. What a fight for Cloud9. The rotations were so fast there from Cloud9. Smoothie instantly alting in. Licorice with the TP, and they're able to turn it around. Yeah, such an advantage there with the Abyssal Voyage coming from bottom side, the early arrival of the duo lane. Look at the top lane minion wave as well. It's kind of pushing there. Cloud9 essentially rotate over for the first turret bonus off of the mid lane and after the fight, though. Yeah, and they're going to get it here. That's going to be first brick going over to C9. They win the fight. They get the gold off that. And what a big swing in the game. Absolutely huge play right there. Beautiful stuff out of that Cloud9 squad. They were down 1,000 gold before this, but two kills plus the turret meant everything. And notice Jensen here is going to cleanse immediately and flash away from this Garner to try and buy time. If you look at the mini-map, the duo is already on the way up. And Sven Skarin tries to get in there to peel for him. Barely in time. Smoothie then able to devour and push him out just far enough away from impact that they don't finish the kill. Yeah, the shield coming through from Jensen just barely surviving. And some credit, though, to Smithy flashing over the Sejuani ultimate to actually mm -hmm. connect on the initial gank. But C9's bot lane rotated up so fast with that Abyssal Voyage, and they didn't have the damage in play to kill off Jensen during that Skarner ultimate. Yeah, courtesy of the Tom Kench Express movement service. That was beautiful stuff out of there. And uh, Cloud9 sitting on a nice 1,200 gold lead can feel pretty nice. And as the blue left hook of the Poe Belter, he can try to survive now through this lane where he's missing a turret. And really a lot of credit to the bottom lane. They're very close to even in farm with the assist gold going over to these guys. They're not really going to be behind. Their turret has not really taken much punishment either. They're quicker on the roam, so they're already kind of getting the payoff on this tank support a bit. You got to look at the other side, though, from Team Liquid's point of view. They had Impact walk down to this fight, so they do have the teleport advantage for Swain on the top side, and Impact still very threatening in this game. He's got the CS lead um, as well onto Licorice, and with Pobelter's teleport coming up, you have to still be worried about more plays coming from Team Liquid. Even though that one was turned around, uh, the game definitely has a little bit of a seesaw here in terms of power. Yeah, and can they actually get back and attack Jensen before his summoners come up? Because that was two summoners down there for Jensen, but both teams kind of looking to posture here around the Dragon. Uh, neither team really fully willing to commit to it, though. This uh, opening game here of our first set of playoffs yeah. feels uh, fairly calculated. And both the teams taking some measured movements. I mean, uh, there are so many veterans on both sides of this matchup. Uh, you got to believe that both of these teams really have their sights set a lot further on into playoffs. And that's really, when you look at TL, kind of what this team was built for, right? This team was totally revamped with this whole new roster. It's kind of supposed to be this super team. You brought in tons and tons of experience from Immortals and Doublelift and all these guys coming together and creating this, this team that's supposed to not only succeed in the regular season, they were supposed yep. to be dominating in the regular season and going into playoffs. Right now, they're going to hope to dominate around this mountain Drake. Smithy pops in with Predator, going to look for Smoothie, and Ryze going to bring in some reinforcements. They want it as Pope's around the backside. And they're going to tile drive down. Tom Kench is going to fall over the wall, goes Fence. Got a nice quick double shock wave to buy a bit more space, but that is a greatly played fight out of Team Liquid. Yeah, those teleports do come in for Team Liquid. Not only are they going to get that kill, but it should give them the space to also take the mountain Drake afterwards. Impact having canceled his will have a bit shorter of a cooldown and they can return to pushing the lanes afterwards. You know, you talk about the bottom lane there, Olay and Doublelift, this Caitlyn Nami duo, gonna continue to get more and more damage on the bottom lane turret as well. Definitely looking good after that. Gonna be able to drop the Rift Herald and probably just crack this turret straight up uh, because yeah. Sneaky is pretty far away. And as a result, C9 is gonna try to pressure on the top side and, and match that. And I do think it was, a, it was a really nice play from TL overall, but I kind of question the TP coming through from Impact because it was pretty delayed. It looked like the fight had been decided. And that's going to mean that Licorice's TP will come up first, and C9 will be able to look for an opportunity to kind of punch back. And at the end of the day, the overall play ends up being an extra kill and that Mountain Drake, which is, of course, valuable. But as we just saw, those outer turrets were indeed traded to this game is basically equal, 100 apart. We can watch that fight again. All right, here it is. They're looking for Olay, just 
barely missing with that Sejuani ultimate. And had that actually connected and locked down a he might have been able to just get blown up and the fight could have looked pretty different. But Smithy chasing in, finds Smoothie, and he's just going to get completely locked up. Exactly. Because they're able to focus after that and Cloud9 were split off. Two went on each side of the jungle path there. They weren't able to defend themselves. Uh, also knowing that there was just even the threat of uh, the teleport coming in from Impact had a lot to do with the retreat of Cloud9 there. Here on the bottom side, though, you can see Smoothie behind Sneaky in lane, waiting just to devour him if there's any sort of aggression. Uh, trying to keep this bottom lane a little bit more safe now that there's a lot of Team Liquid Vision down on this side of the map. And speaking of keeping more safe, we expect Quicksilver Sash out of Smoothie probably next up. He's got the No Magic Mantle, and we've seen so many of these defensive tanks rush that item to survive Skarner and make sure that you can't be the target so you can devour the teammates who are. And I've always really liked this, this adaptation to going more into cleanse uh, for the Spellbook supports. Yes, it's not going to work on the Skarner ultimate, but being able to remove a lot of that CC, uh, especially in these sorts of fights, can end up being more impactful uh, for saving your AD carry than having something like an exhaust. Yeah, especially on Tom Kench. It's like buying a Quicksilver on Tom Kench is buying a Quicksilver for everyone yeah. because he's got, <laughs> got Devour. Well, we are back into this game with a 500 gold difference. Split Drakes and otherwise split map control as Sneaky and Smoothie keep the farm up in the bottom side of the map. And we wait for the next Banger play to happen. One and a half minutes till this Baron Nash responds up and attempted played out towards Ole. Yeah. Pretty good damage tied away by some time. A good stun comes through as the Flash means it hits double if you cleanse right back out. And they're going to stay alive, but there's zero summoners left on Ole. Still getting shot, and Jensen finds the distance to grab the kill. Just kept throwing ultimates till it worked. Light Cloud 9 making use of a lot of their long range abilities here, getting the pick off onto the dual lane and not giving up on that chase. Even after Ole burns his. Uh, your flash as well as the heal uh, they continue the chase they finalize the kill and then they're able to uh, return to the bottom lane here they actually have a roam from mid lane coming as well yeah potential yeah. 4v2 down here teleport is up pretty much for both top lane this turret under siege right now yeah, they're looking to just straight up force this down and i think they may be able to you can see pobelter is trying to roam down here to try to match but the turret is going down very very quickly and he reloads also if you compare that play uh, to the Team Liquid play where Impact did use his teleport and then canceled it. This one was a lot just the threat of Licorice using his teleport and he never actually pulled the trigger there. Uh, you know, that theoretical fifth person joining had a, has a lot to do with the other team backing off in that case. Uh, yet they still hold uh, that teleport. So now top lane is matched. They also didn't commit any summoners and got three. They get the turret, they get the kill. So a lot of positive things for C9 in that play. And Black Cleaver being done on Licorice, the fact he has his cleaver, he has his cowl, and he has his Merc Treads, that is pretty core components to being able to fight up more heavily against the Swain here and perhaps try to open up more of a 1v1 advantage. And you can see he is starting to get a little bit ahead in the farm. And look at this uh, interesting stat we have from the regular season uh, on our drop down here. Team Liquid, uh, they didn't win any games where they were in a gold deficit at 20 minutes. Now, they were, they did win some games where they were in a gold deficit before 20 minutes <laughs> and then made that deficit up, uh, yeah. you know, before the marker and before that stat is actually taken. So it's a little bit wonky there, but the general, uh, you know, point does get across. Well, and it's, it kind of reminds me actually of an interview that Pearson had before their last match against TL in the regular season, where he was talking about uh, TL being fairly inconsistent. They either have these dominant early games and then they could be super competitive, or if they fall behind, his opinion was they're just going to roll over, and that kind of is supported by those stats that we're, we're seeing right here. Let's see if they do roll over, because right now they're only 1,800 gold behind, and as we all know, that's certainly a deficit that can be made up with proper play, but it's 3-1 to one in turrets, and Cloud9 have found the better fight so far. Double if we've been moved to the mid lane, matched by Sneaky here, respective duos around, but yeah, the farm is just identical across those teams. Both teams have lost that outer turret already, so clearly the laning phase lead has petered out. And I want to talk about overall team fight compositions as a, as a result here, because Xmithy is the only true tank on the team. And building towards Righteous Glory, Skarner is never really as durable as other tank jungles. And I do think that Swain can kind of act as a pseudo tank, right? You can still be zoning, you still can be controlling space. Uh, so it can equate to similar things, but uh, it is going to be tough, I think, in the Shred Five Star. Here we go, though. Cloud9 opening up. And they got some shots on the Ole on a half HP slant one more time, then a 300 H. And now it's the Flash away. Is Xmithy going to survive a Shockwave? And then his Flash is down with a couple of volts burned. 
and Cloud9 get some more map control. To answer your point though, Freak, I, I really do agree that the the playstyle here from the Skarner, you know, building full tank has a righteous glory, yet it's into a team with Tom Kench, uh, you know, and Quicksilver Sash uh, on that Tom Kench as well. So it's not like you can go straight for him. The, the options definitely become more limited and you start to feel past the early stages of the game to, to be more and more irrelevant almost um, as you can get kind of bursted through and a lot of this game is hinging on who gets the picks uh, you know cloud nine trying to use that abyssal voyage uh, and the Jin ultimate whereas team liquid now grouping up on the mountain drake they do have the spire for smithy so he's got some extra power there though and they're gonna kind of poke back and forth teleport for pobo it's gonna be joining this fray then a 2500 hp and looks like there's not gonna be a chance to steal sneaky w not gonna be the case this time a full on spend but he'll stay alive and a nice little play by Liquid. Oh, the shockwave shock on the three. Will Liquid there be a follow through? Here. They're, They're waiting for the flash, and they pulled in one. That's going to be the kill onto X Smithy. The tank is gone, and now will they look for impact? Not just yet. The bubble, too will, much. Will they transition up to Baron's side? I mean, both Mountain Drakes were taken by Team Liquid, so C9 didn't get any of them, but they do have the extra man advantage and might want to bait here. There's no smite for Team Liquid available. They would have to try and fight them off the objective. Yeah, it looks like they're, they're just going to straight start it up, and they're going to try to pressure this pretty heavily. If Teal does not come, this Baron will be gone, and if they do, they can turn for the fight. But Teal has spotted it out now with that blue orb. Well, I'm going to have one combat. Oh, it's Sejuani's title is coming across. They can finish this down. If they don't miss the smite, it shouldn't oh. be too hard. The damage comes in. 400 health. The smite comes through, and Pope can be found out in a curtain call. Does not have an exit route and walks into his own death. 5-2 to two now for Cloud9. So decisive there from Cloud9, and they're looking for more with the Abyssal Voyage, trying to chase down Olay. He does have his flash and will get out. Distortion for speed's not going to be enough. So Cloud9 with Baron on 5, looking to take over the game. Yeah, recall with this Baron, go on and purchase and be able to get a lot of money out of secondary turrets. Man, once again, just a single member being picked off here after Team Liquid are trying to exit from the Dragon leads to this Baron setup from Cloud9. Yeah, really nicely done. Tidal Wave engaged, but look at the Sejuani alt over the wall and then Pobelter stepping up here. C9 do go for the collapse on him. He gets rooted up and locked down and with no summoners available, no chance for him to get out. But so much credit has to go to Jensen for the initial shockwave that was setting up that Previous kill. Yeah. As Teal was trying to funnel out of the river, he gets the shockwave that pulls in three or four. Then the Mega Nar comes out, and that leads to a Baron. So brilliant play. And I have to imagine some part of that was Liquor saying, I'm almost Mega, I'm almost Mega, let's take any fight. And Jen says, Okay, sure, I'll let you flash in. And that was some pretty good synergy there. The rookie for Cloud9, the ult that actually secured that pick that got the Baron. Yeah. Not only the play in game here from Cloud9, their execution has been very good, but also the planning that went into this matchup for them. Getting uh, a lot of the answers for what Team Liquid are trying to do. I mean, if they've got the sieging bottom lane and they're trying to, uh, you know, split the map here, they have Rise up on the other side. Um, you know, Cloud9 drafted a lot of counterplay here as far as their bottom lane, especially with the long range. Here comes the Baron Siege, though. C9 pushing up mid, and they have Licorice splitting on bottom. Yeah, and I think they're going to be pretty patient until someone shows on the bottom side or until Licorice kind of comes up and, and rejoins with this team. But I also have to say, I, I really do like the purchase of the Executioner's Calling here for Licorice. Just that one item is so powerful in the 1v1, and you know, they're just going to draw multiple members here down on the bottom side, which could allow uh, C9 to kind of push more heavily in the mid lane. Licorice really is, uh, you know, a guy that deserves more talking about him because everyone was highlighting, oh yeah, and impact such a big difference, uh, you know, in the previous games on the tiebreaker day, uh, as far as his tank play coming through, but they put Licorice back on, you know, Nar here, trying to split push, trying to keep that advantage in the 1v1s, and now he's the one up in CS. Tremendous lead, you know, playing for the team as well. The Mega Nar was critical. You mentioned the Shockwave, but both of those guys, a very big part of the lead that Cloud9 have been able and to build. And Teal are trying to set up a trap to actually catch C9 rotating around here. We'll see if they commit to the fight, but in the meantime, it's Licorice just knocking out on this turret, just slowly punching it down. And it's going to be another turret going the way of C9 and even more of a gold advantage. Righteous Glory was pop but they're trying to force them to some afraid parts, but not going to happen as the bot lane 2 2 going to fall. And that's a six and a half thousand gold lead now for Cloud9. That's actually a pretty substantial one. Gold in the pockets 
They should be resetting fairly soon. 25 seconds left in the Baron. Thumb. They have even enough time to actually go topside because this was a slow pushed wave that is stacking in the top lane. If they want, they can run straight up there and even try to knock down the last outer, which seems to be the choice here. Maybe a little bit greedy because they have a lot of gold in their pockets, but if they yeah. pull it off, that lead gets enormous. Yeah, I would say since Baron's timing out in 10 more seconds and they won't be able to use it too much on this tower, they shouldn't risk anything. Um, five members of Team Liquid are here. Let's see if they actually are able to pull the trigger, though. Licorice is far and it's now about to be Mega Nar, so pretty soon he's not going to be able to fight for anything and looks like it's going to be just the disengage for Cloud9. They forced Liquid to rotate and they are going to reset. Yeah, without the added sieging advantage of the Baron buff, uh, a lot better use here to get out of going back to purchase because Caitlyn traps are still very difficult to siege around, and you have to be worried about the counterplay here from Team Liquid. I do like the move, though, because if TL has the bad base timings or kind of wasn't expecting that, you might be able to get an extra turret, so they don't really risk anything. They push up the wave. Uh, it's going to be able to reset. So all in all, C9 is, is playing this game, I think, very by the book and very, very well. And they continue to counter any sort of option for Team Liquid coming back. There are two more QSSs built here on the frontline members. You know, the backline members aren't even worried because they have Smoothie to Tom Kench to sit in the backline and, and keep them safe. <laughs> exactly. So now even Spenskaren and Licorice both on the front line don't even have that risk of the tank being pulled and focused down. So they are really kind of cutting off a lot of Team Liquid's pathways. And I always think that's kind of one of the risks when you have someone like the Skarner in addition to a Rise and a Swain because it makes the item even more efficient, right? If if it is the Skarner getting you in a team fight, great, you have the QSS for that. If it's Pobelter answering Licorice in a side lane, well, how do you actually win that 1v1 without locking him down with your W? So it has a lot of use cases across this game, and I think uh, as such, it's just an intelligent and efficient buy. Good luck finding the opening back into this game then, Team Liquid, because Cloud9 with their extra money has been able to buy items that can stymie what the counterattacks might have been. Licorice very tanky, lots of MR, and all the split pushes deal magic damage against him. The control ward for impact, trying to keep building up. Void stuff might be next for him, but look at this ocean break, and again, with a 6,000 gold difference, do you even try to stop that? Of course, Liquid's answer is no, and more CD tools will be picked up. I do want to point out that a Baron Rush could be possible. It's double mountain for Liquid, which means they can kill that real quick, especially on three item Caitlyn. So C9 will have to be aware of that in about 85 seconds. The Caitlyn crits are what could possibly save Team Liquid here. That plus setting up the traps in advance around the Baron uh, to maybe get themselves a little bit of a positioning advantage uh, and try and force Cloud9 into a split decision here. But uh, Barring that, it is going to be fairly difficult for them to pull out a uh, well-constructed team fight. Yeah, it just gets so difficult for Impact and Smithy to be able to move forward and not just get focused down because the tanks are so much more beefy on the side of C9. And if you are trying to go in for that engage, you're opening yourself up very heavily to being focused down, bursted down by these carries that have so much gold in their pockets now. You can see the big three items are done for Sneaky. You can see you know, three and a half done for Jensen. Like These guys are on really powerful points in the game. Power is all you need to win the game sometimes. And Cloud9 looking to use the power of Baron buff number two to win this one out. Mm -hmm. We'll have another Elemental Drake before Elder spawn. They killed it quickly enough for that. It'll be a before 35 minute Drake spawn. If they need double Elder to close the game, it'll be quite a while away. 70% crit already here for Sneaky. Lots of damage on him. 80% though for double. If you mentioned Caitlyn crits could be the way they win the team fight. C9 though using their stats to take river control first. The sweeper out from Smoothie makes sure there are no sneaky wards anywhere that might give Liquid a way in. As traps come down, Jin's gonna be happy to clear the way the mini wave. Remember too that Cloud9 are the team with Abyssal Voyage with Jin Ultimate. They have a lot of ways of picking off Team Liquid. So this makes it so difficult for Team Liquid right now to stay in range of Baron to contest this team fight while also not splitting up, not letting any one member be be focused out on the side. So they're making a five-man push here, which leaves Licorice in the one-four on bottom side. They're gonna start Baron because they're they're not responding to Licorice at all here, and they, they just have to try to force out at least the teleport. But I don't know if they can take any any fight. Well, they're gonna try for this one as the shots come through, looking to get Xmithy down to one-third HP. Pops the shield, runs away, and Licorice about to make a but no easy way into the front line as there's. Not a lot of easy engage tools left that Cloud9 can use. Sven chunked a bit low. Out they walk, but mid lane priority as Jin pushes that down. They do put a stop to the split push, but it was at the cost of half of Smithy's health here. So he's trying to regenerate in the jungle while they buy a little bit of time. Impact does have teleport. He's going to answer the bottom wave. And it's up to Cloud9 now uh, to actually force a move from Team Liquid. Mid lane is pretty open. 
They're gonna try double to go through the base gate. Will they go for shots in the turret? They will not, so back to the river goes they're, Cloud9. They're just gonna do the same play to TL that TL did to them. They start up the Baron now. You could force out a TP from your opponent, and it's just back and forth trying to force out these global objectives, trying to even things out, and it's complete darkness now for TL. Uh, it looks like C9 is, is looking to bait instead of starting it. And that one kind of sneaky ward on the entrance there is actually what's keeping them safe from having to face check that. Although sometimes they are in fog of war, but yeah, no shots coming out from C9. The double ocean could have been helpful for the Cloud9 attempts to dance around the map and just regenerate between the pokes, but not gonna happen here. TL gonna shove in mid, and they've actually got some rights to this outer turret right now, and double it's gonna put the shots down. Impact still not here, though. He would have to TP to join. That's four and a half seconds that he would be late to the party, but no engage yet. I have to say, Team Liquid played this very well for being in a tough situation. They are able to get themselves out of, uh, you know, the split push situation. They still have teleport on impact. They have bottom lane pushing now and even got some damage onto the mid lane turret. So as well as Cloud9 have set this up, Team Liquid still trying to get themselves back into this game. Once again, double up some shots onto that turret, and he will knock this one down with a another shot. Though, he's about to go mega. All right, looking for the flank in the back line. It's done. Found towards it. Smithy. A bit of damage there. But he's going to pull some back in. QSS back out. Headwave grabs two. Pavalter at half HP. Will there be the re-engage, though? Cloud9 missing. They're scheduled. They still have Shockwave, and they've got control of mid. Double have to respect the ball. Such good CC coming out there from TL actually to deny the Licorice Engage. It was a never move into a bubble from Nami, into the Nami ult. All of those CCs is what denied Licorice from looking for that engage. And now Meganar will have timed out. They know that they are Ooh. baiting. And Swain W so good for actually checking these brushes. A TL is just going to be able to just push up mid here and try to force C9 to perhaps respond. Really nice mid-game moves out of Team Liquid looking to push this wave yet again. Trapped behind them in case of some kind of flank as C9 must go through their jungle, look for the defense, but that means River Control goes back the way of the blue team and Liquid now get to play for the vision. These control wards gonna be dropped off. The Spire goes to Xmithy and suddenly it's now darkness for Cloud9. Jensen is in the base right now on Oriani. He's gonna have to walk his whole way back here while both side lanes have been oppositely pushed by minions. And again, the tension continues to rise here in game number one <laughs> of the playoffs. And as he rises, the minions fall. Right now, though, a full item lead for Jensen. He just yeah. picked up his Void Staff and there's only about 2,000 gold in Pope's inventory. This could be a spike that C9 can use for the team fight. I have to see, because Licorice is going to send himself down to the bottom lane. He's going to be clearing up those minions, and that gives TL an opportunity to try to force once more. They have TP advantage, but more importantly, Licorice has no TP, and if he shows, which is actually why they're just giving up these minions. Because he doesn't have teleport, they make the call. You don't even get to farm that wave. You just have to let it all die to the turret because you don't have teleport, and they could rush Baron. It's very interesting that we have the third Mountain Drake coming up in this game as well, only 18 seconds away. But with Baron up and Team Liquid having two previous Mountain Drakes, it makes it a little bit difficult for Cloud9 to even grab that one. They would ideally like to get that so they would have more pressure on this Baron objective and actually break the game open. Uh, but Team Liquid still threatening up on the top side. Gold that was six and a half thousand has fallen to about four and a half. Liquid have done a very good job past 20 minutes of clawing their way back into this one. Items still scaling up. Zonia's done for impact. Uh -oh. You can frontline well Makes rise, it. pull some friends into the back line, double up and pull up. Looking for the play is now Smoothie is in a pretty bad Never spot. Move. They're gonna get the pullback. Nice chomp. Bring Sneaky to safety to the flash forward. Oh, the what a code. beautiful play on the blast code. That is Smoothie flatline 5v4 for Liquid. Oh, and Team Liquid gonna take this opportunity to retreat to Baron. They have control wards set up. Cloud9 gonna have to take advantage of uh, any small opening they see. And there's no QSS on Sneaky. He blew that even though Smoothie ate him away. So Flash, Skarner ult on Sneaky could spell death. Double lift here, trying to screen for them. And look at that with the Jin ulti on. It's gonna force the team to run away for now. 18 seconds back of Smoothie to Baron, coming though. back in. Smoothie will have Abyssal Voyage when he gets back up. So he should be able to join the team. And Team Liquid, very wary of this fact. Yeah, honestly, I think they're too afraid of Shockwave. The choke point is too small. Jensen held onto that, and the threat of the ultimate large enough to say Liquid can't take the fight. Another really tense moment there, but TL oh, just Smithy. get the support kill. Now they're looking for Sneaky. Remember, no QSS. He's going to flash, and Nar's going to throw a boomerang, but that's now a summoner down. And a very important summoner as well. If you remember, back to last week, Team Liquid continually diving Sneaky over and over again was what got them one of their victories. Now, though, they retreat down to the Mountain Drake, while previously Team Liquid starting up Baron. 
gonna try with start of the team split up They're right now. Again. Jin is gonna stay on the mountain track, it looks like, as they pull the rest of the team. Lane, though. Yeah, the threats were enough. The TP channel comes out there and Licorice on cooldown. And TL consistently making this play. They start up Baron, very decisive, very confident to get Licorice to blow the global here. And yes, he did cancel it, so he gets some of that cooldown reimbursed. But now they're looking for Pobelter in a side lane, and he got kind of oh. multiple times against TSM this way. Ulti comes in, it's going to get him out a trade of him. Ooh. Pobelter's cooldown is longer technically, but that is still a tool missing. Swain still on bot side. C9's going to try to force the TP. All right, and there's the channel on the other side of the wall, though he's not close to the squad. They can see X Smithy and <laughs> That channel will complete, so he's there with part of the fight, but that's a full five-minute cooldown now. Well, the top tower from cloud 9 side did just go down, so we did have an objective taken. Meanwhile, mid lane minion wave is being pushed up here, and Team Liquid are trying to force Cloud9 to come to them. They're gonna get this turret, but can C9 actually force a fight afterwards? TL needs to kind of navigate this very carefully. They spend the front line. Liquid forced to kite away from Caitlyn's damage output. Devil has Lord Dominic's regards in oh. inventory. The gold lead now only 2,000. I've gotta say, TL is navigating this so well. They were down 7k and moving around the map so well, so intelligently, never over committing. They're back on the Baron again. Oh, right, here we go. Caitlyn traps have been set up, and there's Jin. Oh, Martin Call comes in trying to push them off. Hitting Smithy, losing some HP, down about half. Nice shot comes oh, in, 609 dealt there, and that's before any big armor pen items come through. <laughs> and Smithy low on HP. Cloud9 have one mountain. They can kill it pretty fast. Is it C9's turn to start it up now? I mean, they have positioning. They know Smithy is low. But instead, it's, it's just about the mid lane control. And so much of the access to the Baron has stemmed from that. But look at Smithy. He's looking to try to threaten a flank around. Sneaky has no flash, but... Yeah, but all QSSs that matter are up. And of course, Smoothie is around the squad. Nice back Smithy, though. Gonna grab this Scuttle Crab. It's a really big deal in Vision. But it means that that, for one minute, cannot be taken away. And TL will see that front of the pit. <laughs> this is the biggest Baron tease game I, I have Woo! seen in a long time. Attempt number two here still bringing so much confrontation. And look at the bottom side minion wave here for that Team Liquid. Oh. They triple stacked it. Oh, that Abyssal. Damage, Abyssal Voyage into the front, impact. looking for impact. Knocked into the air, a lot of damage comes through, pops the Zonius. A quick chop to bring back the oh, juggler, the out they down. go. Impact at 1k HP and missing an ulti and missing Zonius and missing Flash. He is not able to frontline anymore. Yeah, that is a lot of cooldowns down on him. Uh, that was Pobelt, they're trying to Realm Warp to get back over to the team in this has been something that has been kind of picked on a couple picked times when played against TSM, but Smithy ben is spotted. He doesn't get the Banshee's Veil off of Jensen. The bottom lane wave for TL, though, is massive, and it's it's punching away at that turret. It might just knock the turret down straight up. It yep. looks like it will be a turret kill, and it's going to push forward towards the inhibitor. And look at the gold. Check the top of the map here as Dang Team Liquid, map. this last 10 minutes, they have stalled out Cloud9 to great measures here, coming back to even almost. Nicely navigated. Once again, the mid lane wave gets knocked down. And ready? They're going to go towards Baron. Scuttle Crab D spawning a quick zombie ward to kill, but there's more vision inside that pit they have to get rid of. Baron's getting They're tired trying. of their tricks. All right, it's being hit as the wave reaches the inhibitor turret itself. Down to 7k HP. Where is Xmithy going to come in from? He does have flash available. Damage still coming through. Ward over the wall down to 5,000. Waiting for the jump back and forth. Pope takes a crit. Sneaky reloads. 4,000 on Baron. Down to about three. Smithy They're over going. the wall. Licorice. Can he stop him? Gets over. Chunks him out. But here comes the engage. Double kill Smoothie. Oh, the spike oh, fight goes to Xmithy. And the fight continues well for Liquid. Two kills already. Double. Getting a double for himself. Azonia's Pop, will the shot be the cut it's too early? early. He they can't kill wall. him, Sneaky! Oh. Goldie gets one, but it's a triple for double if He can chase him down, this could be a Penta potentially. And Smithy looking for a bit more <laughs> to happen, know. but it's a 4v2 with Barrett on the team. They can take so much right now. Oh my goodness, Team Liquid making the comeback here. They win the team fight, Smithy gets the smite as well, and now they're knocking at Cloud9's doors. Got to wait for the minion wave, but there's still huge respawn timers. 18 for Sven and 30 for Sneaky right now. The damage just is not here. Middle inhibitor turret going to fall. The inhibitor itself pretty likely if they can yeah. dodge the shockwave. I think the inhibitor is going to be gone. Shockwave is still on cooldown for a little bit. We'll see if TL wants to reset and spend their gold, though. They are looking to be a bit hesitant. They're giving respect, and Sven is alive, so the inhib is actually going to survive. Only a couple turrets picked up. Of course, the gold lead now 2.5k in Liquid's favor and Baron for two and a half minutes on four of them. Oh my goodness, let's take another look. They decided they were gonna go for the smite fight here, 
Uh, you know, Team Liquid, four members focused down Smoothie, but Smithy's got his eyes on the Baron the whole time. And C9 is not focusing Smithy, despite the fact that Licorice turned, they stopped damage on the Baron, they CC'd him, but they didn't have the damage because their damage dealers were zoned out. And so Scarrett actually smited there. That was, mm -hmm. that was, uh, oh no, he did not, he died. Sejuani went down, no smite went off. That's, that shockwave was a little bit early there for Pobelter coming out of his Zonias. That he didn't picked. get, yeah, exactly. That would have been another kill going across. Either way, Smithy comes up the hero there and it is now TL up a couple thousand gold with map pressure because of that Baron. And Elder is going to be coming up with the Baron buff still active too, which is going to give them even more of an advantage in the fight. You have to remember that Baron gives even more AP since a couple patches ago. So with double AP soul leaners, that's really strong. Oh, they found Sven. He jumps back to his team, gets chomped up by Tom Kench, runs away. Baron minions shoving in the mid lane. 20 seconds now on the Elder Dragon and Liquid seem to have control for the next major objective. Mm -hmm. All right, it's coming up here. 15 seconds, they've set it up. No vision, as you said here, for Cloud9. So they're going to have to be the ones face checking this time around and double, if you can tell. This whole game, he's been using this Caitlyn range uh, and the threat range here to keep the Cloud9 tanks at bay. And double has done six items now off of that fight. He's a full item up on Sneaky. He's already done his build. Sneaky's still sitting on that Doran shield. So definite, a lot of power here in, in TL's side. Pobelter is on his death cap. Like, these guys are really ready to fight and c9 is gonna have to find a really good engage to be able to take a win just before they get the spire that's gonna be away from Smithy for a few more seconds until it cools back down and allows him but this traps for double which means there's no easy run forward a shield and licorice blocks most of the damage but taking some licks eat some honey fruit some more wards come back down mid lane priority is actually cloud nines they could run for the inhibitor if they wanted to but I actually really like that from uh, Licorice there. He charges up some of his Narbar and then eats back the fruit back up to heal afterwards. Right now, though, Split Push is going to force it here. They've got Pobelter in the top side, and he can rise ultimate. He's got Realm of exactly. Ghost and Flashes, Summoner Spells with the spell book. Looking at damage on the Elder Dragon. 11k onto that one, cutting back and forth. Double looks for shots to take as Pob is going for the inhibitor. And keep in mind, the Smite fight went Xpity's way last time. They've gone for the engage as a pressure on the front line. QSS with the walkout. And the Redemption to buy a few more seconds. Impact still cutting around. Tidal Wave onto the entire back land buys even more time as Pope has knocked down the turret already. Yeah, he got the turret. He's actually going back for the inhibitor there. So they're going to try to just delay and make the dragon reset. C9 is having their time wasted here as the first inhibitor is going to get knocked down. The minion wave is pushing on the top side here as well for TL. And they are just kind of moving around the map better. C9's going to start this. Liquid playing a phenomenal end game here. 44 minutes and once the again they're committing for it. And they're running up to the rest of the base right now as they're on the Nexus turrets and suddenly Cloud9 the realize game. they've got to bring Smoothie back in. Impact is here done to go for the turrets unless they can get back in. Smoothie brought a teammate. Teleport coming as well. These two don't do the most damage, but they're going to try to knock this down. The flash oh. on the back line. Licorice is here looking to oh, knock them down. Smoothie going to run out of health. Elder Dragon does not matter as the Nexus falls and game one goes to Team Liquid.